So, as I get this thing uh, going this morning, I, I think I got the camera where I want it as I'm heading into work. So, uh, today is August 30th, 2018. Uh, another Royals video here for you. I haven't made a whole lot of these this year. I, you know, I, I think next season, especially through the off season, as I've really started to really kind of hone in and dial in on some of the prospects, I've gotten a better understanding of what's in the pipeline with the Royals. Um, we'll, we'll do another video like that as to kind of who's coming up and kind of break down uh, some, of the, some of the upcoming prospects and what the realistic shot of some of these guys are for next year. I'm kind of on a bumpy road here, so pardon the uh, shaky camera. I need to get one of those things where I can attach to the uh, vent in my car so it doesn't have to... So yesterday, the Royals traded Lucas Duda to the Braves for cash considerations. And I, one of the things that kind of surprised me about this was, adjust my seat here, there we go. One of the things that kind of surprised me about this by looking at the reaction on Twitter and Facebook and comment sections on places like, you know, Kings of Kaufman and, and Royals Review, it was the amount of fans who were actually upset about this. and I. I, I just don't understand some of the, the mentality of some fans. There was one comment, and I, I commented on the Kansas City Royals Facebook page on several of the posts, and there was one person who I <laughs> I just couldn't believe it when I read their comment. They said, why are the Royals trading Lucas Duda? Are they trying to lose on purpose? I, I didn't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> I mean, I... Trading Lucas Duda does not move the needle. <laughs> it didn't matter one way or the other. Now, if you were to go back to my video back on February 28th, I was I was pretty vocal that I did not think that this signing, the signing of Lucas Duda was a good one. I thought that the Royals should have gone with Ryan O'Hearn as their starting first baseman. And I said that the day that Lucas Duda was traded for, I said that before Lucas Duda was traded or assigned there with the Royals. I thought it was the Royals' opportunity to see how some of these young guys would play in a season that was going to be a very, uh, that was going to be a very troubling, trying season, and which has been even more than we thought it would be. So, again, I, I have to keep reminding myself that many Royals fans that are, you know, especially in the social media circles now, they have not been fans for a long time. They may have been fans, but they haven't followed the team as closely as others have. And there was another gentleman who replied to my comment, um, you know, and I, I, I wasn't biting anyone's head off or anything, but he's, he said, you know what? He says, I did become a fan during the wild card game. And he says, but I've educated myself and I understand baseball on the team. And, and people like that, I, I, I applaud. You know, you've taken the time to, to understand and learn the nuances of the game and, and, and of baseball in general. And that's important, um, especially if you're gonna follow a team that closely. Look, I'm not gonna go on here and make a Chiefs video um, or a college football video. I I, I used to really like football, I, I don't anymore. Um, but I'm not gonna go on here and claim to be some expert at, in breaking down plays or diagnosing uh, you know, the West Coast offense or anything, because I don't understand anything about it. You know, I, under, I understand the basics. Man, the person just about didn't come to a stop. That's weird. Um, I understand the basics of football, but I don't I don't get into the nuances of it. So anyway, so back to the Lucas Duda trade. Um, the Royals got the reports that were out. I don't think the Royals officially said it, but I think the reports coming out of some of the insiders was that it was $300,000. So, you know, a little less money than what it would cost to uh, to sign a, uh, a player to a league minimum contract. So, and I think they signed him for $3 million at the end of the year. And some people say, oh, the Royals wasted $2.7 million on Lucas Duda. Look, I'm not going to go back and revise history and say this was a good signing by the Royals. But like I said back when they signed him, Dayton Moore believes every single win is important. And I, 
And when you look at Lucas Duda's numbers last year, he hit 30 home runs. He had an 818 OPS. Um, he had 27 doubles to go with those 30 home runs. You know, I think the Royals thought that they were going to get someone a little more serviceable. And Duda hit 13 home runs with the Royals in 87 games. Um, his power was was relative was down relative to last year. He was injured this year. He didn't. Um, he was platooning somewhat. Look, Lucas Duda is who he is. And the thing that I don't like when we go back and look at this, and like the Kings of Kaufman, they have a they have an article out about how this is a failure, how the Lucas Duda experiment was it was an abject failure look this is not a, this was never an experiment an experiment would be playing ryan o'hearn at first base for two years an experiment was when we got ryan shealy from the rockies that was an experiment lucas duda was signed as a stopgap because the royals didn't feel that frank schwindel ryan o'hearn or hunter dozier were ready to take on the rigors of a 162 game schedule at first base for the entire season it's not an experiment it is what it is and Lucas Duda is not, that's not the hill you want to die on as a Royals fan, uh, if that's the point that you're going to make. Look, Lucas Duda should not have been signed, but <laughs> I go back to the fact that there's no such thing as a bad one-year contract. It's, look, it, it was a low-risk move, low-risk, high reward, and, and to go back and say that the Royals got hosed on a trade that, oh, well, we only signed him so we could train him for prospects. Look, you were never trading Lucas Duda for prospects. And if you were, you're going to get someone who's probably 26 years old in an A-ball, which that is a guy who's never going to contribute to the Major League roster. So the Royals got, I think, what they could get out of it. And I do remember saying that they might be able to flip him for a low-level prospect. And I said that back in February without knowing the season he would have. If he would have replicated a season last year with the, between the Mets and the Devil Rays, or the, the Rays, um, maybe not replicated because Coffin Stadium is a larger park, but, but put up decent numbers, decent power numbers, he might have been able to fetch a low C-level prospect. Like, you're not going to get anything for Lucas Duda. The market for slow first baseman, left-handed first baseman, low batting average, uh, who strike out a ton, who can't play any other position, those guys are, you, you're not going to find those. I mean, I mean, let me put that back. You're not going to find someone who's going to trade you anything for them. I, I mean, everybody's got that kind of guy on their AAA roster. You know, the, the classic 4A four, four <laughs> first baseman. You know, for Royals fans, you'll remember guys like Calvin Pickering and Ryan Sheely comes to mind too, even though they tried him an extended look at um, the big league level. Kia Kaiahue, guys that are AAA all-stars but never amount to anything in the major league level because they, because the bottom line, they can't hit the breaking ball. So you can find guys in the minor leagues who can do what Ryan Sheely could have done this year. So no one's going to trade for or Ryan Sheely for Lucas Duda. So no one's going to trade for Lucas Duda, at least give you up a player for him. So going forward now, so this opens up the door for Ryan O'Hearn to play the final 30 games of the season um, as, as the Royals' uh, starting first baseman. You know, uh, since they've traded Lucas Duda, that opens up a spot in the 40-man roster. I I would imagine that they're going to maybe put Frank Schwindel on the 40-man and, and call him up. The thing with the Royals have to consider, though, is that, you know, they've got a couple guys coming back. In, oh, well, that's weird. Hang on one second. I've got to get turned here. The Royals have to consider um, Jorge Soler and Brian, Brian Goodwin are both slated to come back from the disabled list and probably will be joining the team here very shortly, probably when the rosters expand. So Solaire, you got Bonifacio, who's playing somewhat decently right now. He's not hitting for the power that he did last year, um, but he's starting to start to get things on track after the 80 game suspension. Alex Gordon's not going to be sat; he's going to play every day. I think that what you're going to see probably, especially when Brian Goodwin comes back, I think Goodwin takes back over in center field. Um, I'm a big Brett Phillips fan. 
I love the way the guy plays baseball. Um, he's, he's a hard-nosed baseball player. He's a fantastic defensive center fielder. And I think he's going to develop into a really good offensive player. When he hits the ball, he absolutely crushes it. His, his, the, the, the bat speed or the, the ball, ball hit speed off the bat um, is very, very hard, very high for Brett Phillips. But that's when he makes contact. He's striking out 40% of his plate appearances right now. That's not acceptable. You can't do that. I mean, I, I mean, unless the other 60% of the time he's hitting doubles and home runs, which <laughs> that's not happening either. So I think Brett Phillips is probably going to be sat down. He's not, he's not going to play every day. Um, they're going to have to get work on him, his ability to, to, for contact on the, on the baseball, which is fine. I mean, that's, he'll, he'll be fine. I, I do. I firmly believe. Guys like that that are uh, just baseball players, they have a feel for the game, Red Phillips will be fine. But I think Brian Goodwin takes back over when he gets back um, with the team here probably next week. He's your starting center fielder. Jorge Soler, I don't know if he's slated to come back at the same time. I think he probably rotates with Bonifacio between right field and the DH spot. Um, Ryan O'Hearn's your everyday first baseman. So if they do bring up Frank Schwindel, put him on the 40-man roster, I think you might see some kind of a pl- platoon. Um, he's the weak side of a platoon, but Ryan O'Hearn's the strong side of a platoon, and Frank Schwindel's the weak side of a, of a platoon at first base. So if you're not familiar with what a pl- what that means, if you're kind of new to baseball or you're, maybe you've never heard that term before, um, Ryan O'Hearn is a left-handed batter. Frank Schwindel is a right-handed batter. So, so they face their numbers against the opposite throwing pitcher, um, are very high. So O'Hearn really hits right-handed pitching well, does not hit lefties very well at all, and vice versa. Swindell crushes left-handed pitching. Uh, his OPS is like 1,100 in the minor leagues this year against left-handed pitching. He absolutely destroys it. So I think what you could see at the final 30 games is they do call up uh, Frank the Tank. Um, you're going to probably see him play exclusively against left-handed pitching. Um, but that, that's a good especially when they bring in like a lefty specialist off the bench, um, out of the bullpen. Um, you know, Schwindel is a guy that can come in and pinch hit late in the game and, you know, get you, get you a base hit, hit you a home run or something like that. Look, the Royals are 40 and 90. Is that right? Yeah. 41 and 90. They're like 50 games under 500. These, these final, um, these final 30 games, these final 30 games are not going to be uh, judged on wins and losses. It's it's what do these guys do? And I and I take that back. Wins and losses are important. And I think it is important for the Royals players, the young guys, to go out here and play well and win. Um, they've got 30 games. If they go 15 and 15, I think that's a I think that's a great sign. I think they're more than likely going to be, you know, 12 and. 12 and 18, is that right? 12 and 18, yeah. 12 and 18, 13 and 17. Look, if they could play 500 ball over the final month of the season, or maybe even play above 500 ball, have some pride in what you do, and and then just just go for it. What's going to really hold the Royals back, though, the final month of the season still is their pitching. I, I mean, uh, Brad Keller... Uh, has been really solid all year long. And honestly, he's not getting a lot of play for the American League Rookie of the Year, but he probably should be. You guys know how I feel about the war stat. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, But if you are going to look at it, and a lot of these analyst guys and writers, they really preach war. Brad Keller is, is worth more war than any other American League rookie. So, go figure. Train track. So that's something that um, is going to hold the Royals back over the final month is is their pitching. Keller's been good. Jake Junis has been really good lately. Duffy was good last night uh, when as the Royals beat the Tigers 9-2. Or yesterday during the day. I think it was a day game. Um, so I think they're going to get extended looks at some guys. I don't expect to see guys like Nicky Lopez brought up or uh, Josh Stalmont. Uh, who are some other guys that uh, Love Lady, uh, Richard Love Lady? I, I don't expect him to be brought up, mainly because 
these they know what they've got in these guys, I think, and that they're they're going to be just fine if they look at them in spring training. They're going to get they're going to be non roster invitees to spring training, obviously. They're not going to be on the 40-man roster. They're not going to start these guys' service time, especially Nicky Lopez. He was just drafted, you know, in 2016. Uh, but he does look really good. Um, Khalil Lee, another guy. They're not. He's not going to get brought up. And that, um, I, you know, Paulo Orlando will be brought back. Uh, you know, just as, as as a bench player, he probably should not be back on the roster next season. So. So we'll see what happens with the Royals over these final 30 games as they as they expand their rosters to the 40-man uh, active roster. I'm curious as to see how these guys play. I'm really excited now that Lucas Duda is, has been traded and frees up a, uh, a spot. Look, I'm really, I'm kind of excited to see, especially when Brian Goodwin comes back. I loved the Brian Goodwin trade, by the way. I, I mean... Some guys had never heard of him. He was a guy that just was never really given a shot in Washington. This is a guy who, he is a good plate discipline, good good batting eye. He's got power. He's got athleticism. Um, hang on one second as I get, get this going here. Um, oh, sorry, guys. He's a guy who I think is really going to come into his own. Oh, with the Royals, this is a guy that you need on your roster. Um, a guy who can, he was just kind of a cast off from another organization. Um, uh, Raul Banyas was like that back in 2000, you know, the early 2000s uh, with the Royals. And I've mentioned that before in a previous video, talking about Brian Goodwin. So I'm excited to see what Goodwin can do when he comes back. In very, very, very small sample size, he played very well with the Royals before he got hurt. Um, so... Excited for that, and again, Lucas Duda traded. The Royals got cash for him. Great, good job, good job, Royals. The only thing that the only negative side is that they should have played Ryan O'Hearn the whole season. They never needed to sign Lucas Duda in the first place, but you know that's in the past now. So we move forward. We move forward with Ryan O'Hearn as the Royals starting first baseman, and let's see what uh, let's see what the, what's what he can do for the rest of the for the final thirty games. Um. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I think the Royals surprise some, play, some, some teams down the stretch. The final 30 games, I'm going to call it. The Royals are going to go 16-14 and 14 over their final 30 games. They're going to avoid their franchise worst rec, uh, for losses. They're still going to lose 100 games. They're going to lose 104 games, which they'll come up too short of, their, uh, of the abomination that happened in 2006, was it? 2005? That was, those were some bad baseball teams. Um, so... Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, feel free to leave me a comment as I'm trying to grow this channel. We'll talk to you guys later.